On this week's episode, we finally give you what you've been waiting for. Oh, yes. It's been a year. We knew it was coming. And now it is here. That's right. It's... The Democratic National Convention is all this week. What? What? So pull up an empty chair, folks, because we've got all that and more coming up on this edition of the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number, what are we at? 33. 33. Double threes. I am Casey Coughlin. And I am Michael Gaines. <laughs> so, what, are you watching the Democratic National Convention, or is it just a butt well, of a joke? not right now. No, not right now, obviously. I, <laughs> I read that the reason why football is, I'm wearing my, my Giants jersey for those um, that you have are. watched me over the years, knows that. I'm a big Giants fan, and, and the Giants jersey comes out same time every year. But the reason why football was on today, the Giants playing the Cowboys, is because the Democratic National Convention is tomorrow, and they thought that they would actually lose uh, watchers, so they, they moved football to today. I don't know how true that is, because I would rather watch football. Well, it's been all this week. They had speeches last night by Michelle Obama and... Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody else, I forget, Carlos something. Um, and, and then tonight, I was just looking at the tweets before the show. Apparently, Bill Clinton spoke, so I'm going to have to look that up after the show, mm-hmm. for sure. Still a fan? I am. Yeah, I mean, he was just a, a cool president. Like, everybody says, you know, that they voted for uh, Bush the second because he was a cool guy that you would want to have a beer with. Yeah. That's totally what Clinton was. <laughs> like, I don't know why. I mean, clearly, he was even for some ladies so cool that they wanted to have multiple <laughs> beers and other things with cigars and whatnot. But I mean, like, amongst all that, you know, all his scandal, he still has a much higher approval rating than Bush the Second or even his father. So, yeah. I mean, like, I could do no wrong. But anyways, this isn't a politics show. No, no, it isn't. It's it's just funny because it's news uh well let's let's get to the big news what's the big news in one <laughs> week <laughs> they finally excited. announced it yeah we're worried about this because people are saying oh september 12th is going to be the big announcement but where are the invites where are the invites show us the invites and then the invites finally showed up today yes invite all the things <laughs> This is the announcement for the iPhone 5. The uh, The logo, if you haven't seen it, is basically a 12 in Helvetica um, with uh, a mirror image of a 5 underneath it, like a, like a, like like a reflection. Like a shadow, shadow of the 12 yeah. as actually the number 5. So, and so, of course, people are yeah picking that apart, saying, uh, oh, what could it mean? Does this mean it's going to be called the iPhone 5? Or is it just simply it's the fifth iteration of the iPhone? Which is untrue because this is actually the sixth iPhone. Yes. Um, the funny thing that I've been seeing is that people are, are tearing it apart because people are always tearing apart invitations and they're always wrong. But mm-hmm. for this one, people are saying, well, how do we know that Apple isn't announcing five things on the 12th? And, and the logo <laughs> says, really yeah, the logo <laughs> says it's almost here. It, singular. Yes. Not they're True. almost here. So this is clearly <laughs> an iPhone 5. Uh, announcement yeah wow. i think it, i think it's going to be called iphone 5 and when i was um well i mean shout out always to MacBreak weekly on twit.tv but mm-hmm. as i was watching this week uh, and they were talking about the announcement andy anatko brought up something really um i think really kind of solidifies why it's going to be the iphone 5 and not the new iphone and that's kind of been this whole the biggest news piece in in why they're picking apart i mean well like you said they always pick apart the invitations but why people are so kind of clamoring over just the name of the iphone was you know because the ipad 3 wasn't the ipad 3 it was the new ipad Mm -hmm. so now everybody thinks that well this is going to be the new iphone and that and they're just going to go down that road from now on and it's not going to be the iphone 5 but look at it this way um 
up until now, and I think probably going forward, they're going to have three iPhones in production or for sale at mm -hmm. retailers always. So you have your latest and greatest, and then you have last year's mo model for you know a slightly lower cost, mm -hmm. and then you have the model two years ago, which is, will kind of become the uh, free with contract or prepaid model. So you can. Well, much like iPods, kind of you know, spread yourself across the whole um, market and and capture anybody who's looking for a phone. Sure, there's no reason why you wouldn't choose an iPhone because there's an iPhone in every sales bracket. Mm -hmm. um, so even though that's not going to be, you know, the right now it's the three GS, the four, and the four S. So that'll probably move up to the four, four S, and five. Mm -hmm. But because they have and they're going to probably have at least two, if not three, iPhones always in circulation. They can't go to calling them just the iPhone. They have to have some differentiator. Yeah. You know, I want oh, the iPhone. You, well, iPhone? No, I got the iPhone. Oh. <laughs> okay. Which makes me still wonder. I, I, I've read a lot of theories about why they did that with the iPad, and I still don't understand why they didn't just call the damn thing the three. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it... I don't know. I mean, I guess it makes sense if they're going to announce a mini, and that's still an if technically because that hasn't been announced yet mm -hmm. either. But if I, I mean, I guess it looks better in a lineup when you have the iPad and iPad Mini, you know. So, so those are the differentiators. Mm -hmm. There's iPad, and then there's iPad Mini. That's there's a good not point. iPad Two, iPad Three, iPad Mini. But like even right now, they there's two iPads out there for sale right now. There's you can still buy the iPad two, mm -hmm. and then there's the new iPad. Yeah. So unless they continued, I mean, they might stop doing that and just sell whatever's the latest iPad. But if they keep the the last iPad around, that's gonna again get confusing. Sure. But I think that, that might end because of the iPad mini coming out. So then the iPad mini will be the cheaper iPad model and they won't need to sell mm -hmm. two 10 inch iPads. And that announcement is supposedly coming in October, correct? Well, as far as we can tell, as far as the rumor mill has <laughs> you know, churned out, um, yeah, that people are saying and, and John Gruber on his, uh, daring fireball blog, uh, speculated this and oh i think a couple other sources did too like uh wall street journal or bloomberg or somebody mm -hmm. um we're all speculating well what if they just have an iphone event in september and so then they can dominate the news cycle for however long that is you know and then do one in october <laughs> like we mentioned this last week sure they're um, going to dominate it they're going to dominate the news for nine days before the phone comes out and then how long after that so they're probably they're, a week or two. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, they can start it all over again with the iPad Mini in October. So. Absolutely, they just keep that whole thing going. Uh -huh. I think it's perfectly brilliant, and this is what Apple does best. It it seems to me that they have gotten announcements and 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 knowing that they're going to be big in the news down to a, a perfect science almost because mm -hmm. you never, well, like Google tries to do it. They they're they're trying, but it seems to me like. They've got an initial reaction and then a sharp fall off. Whereas Apple knows how to keep that initial keep reaction yeah. and then just keep that wave going as long as they can. So yeah, yeah, I think that companies should, or, or I was going to say they should learn from it, but no, don't, because <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep that Apple wave going. So uh, yeah, there have been. Um, we're, I didn't put this in rapid fire, but there have been some videos of the, the supposed iPhone five versus the four S. I, mm -hmm. It yeah, it's it's taller, it's slimmer, but we're gonna wait until uh, until the announcement because the announcement will be a week from today. So we record these on Wednesdays. Um, yeah. So, so, so next that week, night <laughs> and, we'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I might as well just write in the show notes episode thirty four iPhone five announcement, and that's all we're gonna talk about. That's that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Expect a, a very detailed break, uh, breakdown mm -hmm. of everything that was discussed, and then we'll decide. I guess. Are, are you planning on getting the five? I think we talked about this last week. Oh yes, I'm already. My work uh, already has a uh, a list going of employees who need the iPhone five, need. and so 
I'm um, t- heading up that whole uh, event. So okay. as soon as they go on pre-order, I'm uh, tasked with pre-ordering a whole bunch. So <laughs> I'll probably, I mean, and of course, you know, somebody is at the top of that list. But um, so I'll probably have mine, you know, the day it comes out. Okay. Uh, what's uh, with Apple partnering with Paron? This is interesting. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, even more, well, again, like the rumors are so strong. Nobody didn't think an iPhone 5 was coming. But again, to, to solidify this even before the, uh, the announcement yesterday by Apple, um, Apple, I think it was late last week mm-hmm. or mid to late last week, started uh, advertising trade-ins for the iPhone 4S, mm-hmm. that they'll buy back your phone for as much as 300 bucks for a, you know, well-kept-together, good-condition iPhone 4S. Works for which me. Is, yeah, this is unheard of. Um, Apple doesn't do this for, I mean, they they will recycle computers and and electronics for you but they won't buy them back this is um this is awesome i mean like if you don't if you don't want to do craigslist or ebay like i've always done or you don't want to do gazelle or just any of that seems like too much of a hassle Mm -hmm. here's one more option that's quick and easy and you could probably do it while you're in the store buying your iphone 5 you know and this, this will pretty much pay for it if you've kept it in good condition and I know I don't have an iPhone 4S, but I know people that do, and they keep them in very good shape. Um, so this is this is going to be good for them. For me, I've just got a four. I skipped the mm-hmm. S because uh, I was out of I was in contract at the time, and it just seems silly to get a, a, a 4S when I knew a five was coming. But they must know that the 4Ss are still selling like crazy, or else they wouldn't do this. Which yeah, proves your point uh, that you made before. But I think. Th- like most whenever they are about to announce a new product it's usually about a month out that they uh, kind of start trying to dilute the market you know and kind of um, flush that that older product out Um, so I think this is probably going along with that Um, you know that they're not I don't think at this point in time they're really not worried with um, stopping people from buying the 4S. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, people, if they're going to buy a new phone and they know and they've been reading the news, then they're probably waiting anyways. And so there's no sense in, you know, trying to, to keep that up sure. and keep people, you know, coming in to buy 4Ss when the, you know, they're they're probably wanting to get rid of all the 4s's that are in in stock in the market right now and just yeah yeah google leaks uh, an upcoming uh, update for google drive this is big uh they yeah ha- it's, <laughs> it's finally got what you know literally <laughs> what we've <been> wanted like- <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh google drive is of course like the the dropbox type of virtual drive for ios where you can put documents in there and everything like that the the great thing about it the biggest problem that we've had with um <clears throat> with google drive is that if you have a document in there you couldn't edit it and it was driving a lot not of people crazy easily. no not right not easily and now you're going to be able to edit google documents which is huge um so now People like myself that depend on Google Docs for doing things uh, like like setting up the show notes and such like that, I can write stuff up while I'm on the road. Whereas before, I had to go through this convoluted way of writing down notes. And yeah, like like Casey said, you could do it, but it was messy and not even worth the trouble. No, it would have you know in the mm-hmm. action menu like open in Pages, and then so you have a separate version in pages then and then you do your editing and then you save it but then you couldn't save it back to google plus it would just save it in pages and uh, it was very um convoluted yeah um and then also you're going to be able to view google presentations which uh, is like powerpoint so this is this is big now there are some updates for android um i'll just say you can create folders move folders and update and uh, i'm sorry and upload to folders that's that's good uh, create edit tables in Google Docs, uh, comment on Google Documents, and view and present uh, and comment on presentations. So that's just for the Android version. So it looks like Google is not going to abandon iOS 
or leave no. it behind. Granted, there are some things that the Android version can do that iOS, the iOS version can't. Yeah, right now, I mean, I can see them catering, obviously, to Android for <laughs> obvious reasons. But I mean, the you know, we have we have an app. It's fine, and and it, so long as it can edit. Another feature I'd really like is to be able to uh, access docs that I haven't created, mm -hmm. which you still can't do in any of the draw, even the um, the desktop drive applications you can only access docs that you've created so any docs that are shared with you mm -hmm. um are not there which kind of sucks but um yeah i mean we'll see. it is what it yeah. is there was a, a a big news item going around that um anti-sec hacked into uh, an fbi laptop and got 12 million udids uh, iphone udids off this laptop and the fbi denied it and apple denied giving these udids to the fbi udids are unique identifiers for your phone so every phone has this long string of characters i think it was a 32 is it 32 characters I should know. Um, I use them all the time. I don't know, but it sounds right. It's very, very long. It's it's longer than you know your SS uh, or your IMEI and your SIM card number, and yeah. it's different than those. It's different than your serial. Um, you can see it in iTunes if you hook it up, and I think that's about it. You, um, you hook it if up, you don't have you any have to... developer tools. Right. Uh, I use them as a developer because I have to get the UDIDs from people that are able to run my apps before putting them on the app store. They're, they're the testers. So right, everybody that has a, a, a device that they got to use, they got to send me the UDID and then I have to add it to the list of approved devices and then, and then distribute the app. So it's, it's a circular system. So these UDIDs, um, I'm I'm here's the thing. The the thing that bothered me about this whole thing is that nobody has disputed the fact that this whole thing could be fake. And okay. because there's no proof one way or the other that all these UDID strings are real. I could sit here and write a Perl script that creates a whole bunch like twelve million fake oh, UDIDs. You're saying, why do we know that they're iPhone UDIDs and exactly. not some other device? UDID because iPhones or just aren't random the strings. only. Yeah, right. I mean, iPhones aren't the only devices that have these. Um, most electronics and gadgets nowadays have these, probably for similar reasons for uh, development and testing. But I mean, I don't see. I mean, I see why this matters, but all of this is going to be null and void after iOS 6 comes out because mm -hmm. Apple is getting rid of the whole UDID system. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I'm just very skeptical about this entire story. If what I want to know is whether or not any of these UDIDs, like Apple can go and, and take a look at these strings and match them with their system of creating UDIDs and say, yes, these actually belong to real people. Mm -hmm. That has not come out. Um, I have yet to see anybody that's, that says my name was on there. And, it, and, and apparently this list had 12 million UDIDs with name, address, zip code, and such. But, uh, but some of the information was stripped out. So mm -hmm. what I want to know is, has anybody looked for their UDID and found that it matched their personal information that was in that document? And, and I have yet well, to see... Well, there isn't like a place you can go search this, right? Because the list sure. hasn't been released. So, you know, us common folk can't go and, and search a database that's been released to the public. Well, you you could put in your UDID, and then there there are a couple of websites that, that are out there, and they say, yeah, give us your UDID, and then we'll tell you whether or not it's been used. Well, oh yeah, that sounds legit. And I, then exactly. put your credit card number, and we'll tell you if it's been used. You know. <laughs> well, see that that's one of the things that I'm wondering about is that how do we know that it's real in the first place? Just to get people to put their UDIDs into this website, and then exactly. say, that and then sounds... say, oh, now we've got a whole bunch of legit UDIDs. Yay! It, because These people are idiots. <laughs> Uh, there was an article that I was reading just before we started recording that said that, um, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I can, that the president's iPad was one of the ones that was on there. And, and, and the name had absolutely nothing to do with 
with Obama or or anything. It, oh, I, I lost the, the thing because I, I read it real fast. But it, it just seems to me like this whole thing is completely bogus. It's definitely a possibility, but I'd imagine that there will be more information. I, no, uh, what you said is actually a, a good thing. What if somebody came up with a fake account, um, not a user account, but just like an accounting of, of 12 million stolen credit card numbers? Mm -hmm. And then say, go to this website. Oh, there's just happens to be a website out there with. Uh, well, no, there um, are actually sites out there now that say like, oh, has there? your identity been stolen? Put in your credit card and we'll tell you or put in your driver's license and we'll tell you. Like, wow. Are there really? Oh, that yeah. goes to show how, how much I stay away from that stuff. <sighs> I didn't realize that. Well, I'm. I have a feeling that this is going to come out one way or the other as being. Yeah, I think there's going to definitely be more developing on this. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Willis is not going <laughs> to sue Apple. <laughs> there was a story well, going that, around. Thank God. I mean, oh. I was really, really worried. There was a story going around that Bruce Willis was going to sue Apple because of the fact that he was worried that all the music that he bought on iTunes is not going to be transferable to his kids when he dies. This is so dumb. <laughs> this is even dumber than the previous story. First off, there are ways of all right let, let's start from the beginning from a technological point of view a lot of the stuff are mp3s so you're going to you're going to physically have those on your hard drive so you can back them up the second yeah. thing is yes at some point you have to use a credit card and yes at some point when somebody dies their credit card number is eventually taken away all right this is a new time in our lives when when all this digital ownership is new so, right. But we don't know exactly what could happen over the years. Um, but Bruce's wife tweeted and said, no, he's not going to sue. But it does bring up a good point. What does happen to your music ownership after you die? Can you give it to your kids? Well, you should be uh, able he to. Well, he's worried that because he just found out, like just recently, I guess, that you don't actually own the music you buy from iTunes, that it's just licensing because it's all just software, which is true, but you do download it and you do house it on your hard drive. And up until recently, if anything happened to that hard drive, you and you didn't have a backup, you were screwed. Sure. That was Apple acted like that was the only copy and you couldn't re-download it even though you purchased it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's changed just recently and they now allow you to re-download, you know, your purchases wherever and how many times, um, providing you have your iTunes account information still. But this just screams Bruce Willis doesn't know technology or how to use a computer. <laughs> Um, that, if he's going to sue Apple and iTunes because he doesn't understand what what the little you know gnomes are doing in his box, <laughs> um, well, I'm sorry. Like maybe his lawyer should have explained to him how things work and how he can back them up and how he could probably do the you know analog loophole and just burn them and rip them and then they're mp3s and they don't have the drm and then he can bequeath all ones. his music collection to his yeah. kids you know because i'm sure they care so much about this i think that he was just pissed off that the return of bruno isn't on itunes <laughs> yeah we're all just dying a little inside because of that oh god have you ever seen that it's awful no it was an hbo special where he played this this fake person named bruno uh, and and apparently they they had gotten all these people that they interviewed musicians and such and they say yeah I remember when Bruno played CBGB in the seventies and obviously he really didn't and then he and then uh, Bruce comes out as this person ten minutes later after they do all these fake interviews and and plays his music and and I I just thought it was awful so it was, it was a, a long documentary on HBO. sort of yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah uh, I can I can't imagine why that's not on iTunes. <laughs> All right, let's move on to rapid fire. What you got for us first? Happy birthday, iPod Touch. You're five. Here's a truck. <laughs> Here's a truck. A truckload of them. So is is it five years already? Yeah. 
Uh, they came out right around the, uh, a little bit, I mean, the same time, a little bit after the iPhone. No, it was a year after, that's right. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, because they pretty much, um, you know, put all their technology that they put into the iPhone into the new iPod Touch. Sure, so. they just ripped out the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, so we, we do have one in the family. I personally don't have one because when it came out, I still had my 160, I still do have my 160 gigabyte iPod. Uh, mm. iPod Classic, I guess they Classic. call it now. Yeah. And I didn't want to give it up because I still have most of it filled up. Like of that 160 gig, I think I have like 110 or 120 gigabytes used up audio video. Mm. So to drop down to, I think at the time was a 16 or a 32 gigabyte uh, yeah. flat drive, it just wasn't worth it for me. But now I've got everything on the phone and I haven't touched my iPod Classic in a long time. I haven't touched an iPod since the iPhone came out. And when the iPod Touch came out, I had an iPhone, so... So why bother? Since I'm a big girl, I can have a phone and... <laughs> Let me ask you something, Casey. <laughs> co-host to co-host. Apple fan to <laughs> Apple fan. When is the worst time to announce an, a new phone from a competing company? What is the worst time? The worst time. Probably uh, September now. Probably September because October. that seems to be... Remember <laughs> what I had said about how Apple knows how to ride that wave? Well, mm -hmm. Nokia and Motorola apparently don't because they're announcing stuff a week before Apple. They well, but no, that's actually... I mean, that makes sense from their standpoint. They're going to release it soon. And this always happens with competitors, right? Yeah. They try to get in right before you know, the big announcement of their competitor thinking like, ah, gotcha. We're going to undercut you, yeah. you know, <laughs> but like a week, a is like not given a whole lot of time. Like no. you should do a month before then you again can kind of dominate the news cycle. You've got that whole time and people might actually look at you, but mm -hmm. since they're releasing right now and <laughs> all they need to, all Apple needs to, to do to totally wash over that is announce the announcement <laughs> and nobody remembers nokia or motorola yeah i i saw that motorola announced something today and to be honest i was, I was working i was busy i didn't even take a look at what it was but um i didn't see any announcements by nokia did you i didn't see I, it I, I saw a new yellow uh, lumia it looks oh. like a lumia 900 but it's yellow so I think that's their new Windows 8 phone that they just announced. Okay. And so they that announce would... it and <laughs> Apple again, brilliant as always. Yep, yeah, there's going to be an announcement next week. And so they announce, you're right, they <laughs> announce the announcement and people just forget about Nokia and Motorola all together. Yeah, a week is, is too close. And if past, uh, you know, releases have been any indication like the the past launch of the Nokia uh, Lumia 900 was a disaster from you know AT&T is totally oh, dropping yeah. the ball sure. so if that is anything you know like if this launch is going to be anything like that launch they really need more than a week <laughs> to you know sell a lot of phones yeah they should have done this a week or two ago Yes, yeah. But then again, if you're Apple and you know something's coming and you've got insider, you know you've got insiders. True, true. They could have uh, they could have announced their announcement earlier and dominated any time that it was going to, you know, poke its head out. Uh Mountain Lion uh passes 10% adoption. Would you expect that number to be higher at this point? I uh, actually I would. I I want to say Lion was probably higher at this point, but I know Mountain Lion, this is, you know, only a year out from Lion. It's a little bit smaller of an update. There's a lot of people questioning it still. So I, I'm not surprised that it's only 10%. Hmm. Okay. Under normal circumstances, if this was a normal, you know, two or three year OS release cycle, then I would say, yeah, this should be higher. But, you know, they're doing this new release cycle where it's every year now. So it's going to be a little bit smaller. And I don't think, yeah, most people, unless I bet 10%, that's probably 
mostly people who just bought new Macs mm-hmm. that came with Mountain Lion on it. About the iPhone 5, uh, this happens every time a new device of, of any, from any company uh, comes about is that there's always there are always people, third-party uh, hardware manufacturers that want to create their own version of what should be out. So SCSI connectors and USB connectors and all over the years there have been so many third-party connectors. Well, it turns out that Apple is going to be the only supplier of the new dock connector. Well, technically they were the only technically they were the only supplier of the last dock connector. Every other third party had to license it from Apple. True, but they were out. It seems to be that they're going to be the only people that that create it like they're not going to license this to anybody. That's what it seems like to I me. I mean, I would f- it's possible, I guess. I would be surprised and and it would seem kind of sucky that they would kind of close it off from Mm -hmm. you know other third parties that they would cut out like griffin or belkin from making accessories for because i would think if you're apple you would want as many people as possible making accessories for your products um to kind of you know better forward that adoption but if you're going to cut them all off that kind of feels like uh, what twitter's doing now with their api and all the app developers you know They've been making accessories up until now, you know, fine. And then all of a sudden, you cut them off. Like, <laughs> I can see, I can see Apple doing that, but it, it just, it really, it seems silly and unnecessary, unless they have really good reason to. And I'm ready to hear it, but yeah, I don't know what that would be. Just like the clones in the late '90s. Well, that they had good reasons to cut them off. I know, I know. That was a bad analogy, and it's a completely different story. I, I I know, but I'm, I'm just being silly. Um, and and speaking of Twitter, now I had mentioned on the Nexicon last week that I joined App.net. I saw some people that were talking about it. Um, some friends of mine are on it, so I decided to take a look, sort of see what's going on there, but. I didn't have a really good experience with it because the app.net website doesn't auto update. You have to keep refreshing your feed all the time. So I was trying to find uh, uh, an iOS app and I thought of it just before I went to watch a Giants game today. I had gotten uh, a reply from some people saying that they're using an app called Rhino uh, and it's on the uh, it's on the app store. It's the it's app.net's first native iOS client. I don't know who wrote it. I have not yet tried it. I just got this in as, as uh, we were about to record. So if you're on app.net and you want to have uh, an iOS app, then there you go. It's called Rhino. And there you go. And if you Hey, if you know of any other awesome apps uh, for app.net or really any other social media, um, you know, send us an email, infiniteloopshow at gmail.com. We'll read them on the air. Yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine, let me see if I can find where he wrote to me. Uh, my buddy Kazo, who's a, just a, a brilliant iOS developer, he wrote um, hashpan.com and looked through the videos of progress. So apparently he's working on one also, which does not oh, surprise okay. me because when I saw app.net had an API, the first person I thought of was my buddy Kazo. I'm like, oh, he's got to be writing something. It's Yeah, it's still kind of in a, in its infancy. So I'm sure you know there's probably a lot more in production than that are actually out there in the wild. Sure. All right, moving on to culture. I was going to talk about my first week with the new Mac, but I didn't think it was right to do yet until I got my eight gig more RAM because <laughs> it's it's more RAM chugs a little bit, but you no, know, it's it's really good. It's it, I've been loving it, and I probably should have gotten a new Mac years ago, but and eh, whatever. Casey, tell us about this amazing thing. I had seen this and I forgot to put it in the show notes. So. This is fantastic. This is a, I think I saw it on either nine to five Mac or. T-U-A-W, I forget where I originally saw it, but um, this guy, he made, he redid his home office to look like a little Apple store, like identical. He has the uh, the light, you know, birch wood desk um, that looked like the tables. He even has a, um, a black, uh, you know, the panel, like... Not all the Apple stores have them. These you see these more in the Apple section of 
Best Buy, mm -hmm. where it's a tall, just black, like, monolith that has the Apple logo lit up in the middle, and some have a TV screens embedded showing off, you know, demo videos or whatnot. He has one of those in his office with a TV embedded in it, and it's his uh, Apple TV is hooked up to it. Um, and then he's got a, a nice little uh, bookshelf that's light wood with aluminum shelving and products lined up. Like he has multiple iPhone cases, multiple uh, Apple TV boxes. I don't know if they're just empty boxes of the products he has around his house or yeah. he just bought multiple products just to put on his shelf for show. Um, take a look. If you just Google home office like Apple Store, you'll probably find it. But it's fantastic. If you're an Apple fan, I mean, there's no doubt you'd be drooling over this and wanting to do it yourself. Sad part is he said he spent close to $12,000 doing this. That's just sick. I mean, I have to believe that this could be done cheaper, especially oh, yeah. with like some Ikea furniture or something. Well, the, the desk is probably the most expensive, but he also did have yeah. one of those black Apple pillars that you see at uh, Best Buy. Yeah, no, that's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But he said he custom made it from like a bookcase with a, a door kind of that he cut the logo out. So I'm thinking like you could probably get like an Ikea bookcase, paint it, you know, and, and kind of modify the door so that it would be like that. Mm -hmm. The glass walls are what got me because they didn't have to be glass walls. He could have just made them white, but he made them glass. <laughs> yeah, and he got this special like like hanging light fixture it everything so like the lighting even feels like an apple store the way it's distributed all over evenly you know i was i've been working on this room people have been watching the show know that i've been working on this this new room and i'm, I'm just about closing up uh some of the the little things lately i never once thought of, of creating an apple store type of look because all these walls are white and i've thought of everything but an apple store it's an interesting idea but i don't know if i would like it being too white i would want to put some color in the room and that's the one thing that the, yeah. the room lacks is that other than the, the the light tan of the table there's really no color in that room well i mean you have a lot of color on like the the tv displaying his apple tv um desktop and then True. he's got a couple of i don't know if they're photographs or paintings of his kids but aside from that yeah it's like an apple story very simple mm -hmm. all right what are our apps for this week go um i have to be honest i haven't been downloading a whole lot of apps lately uh, guild wars 2 has kind of taken over my life <laughs> but i did notice um when checking some updates yesterday that facebook had updated their app so you know i go through and i updated it and every time i go into that app i have to say from a developer perspective i'm constantly surprised pleasantly surprised with that app and what they're doing with it it seems that now that they have the native iOS app and they're actually using the SDK, it is just so nice. And it's getting nicer and nicer. The things that they're doing with it, like I haven't seen done in any other app yet. Mm -hmm. And they have some really cool um, animations and transitions, like I said, that I haven't seen anywhere else. And it, it seems like they're really, um, they have some good developers on their team and they're really kind of pushing the envelope with what can be done with the SDK. Nice. I haven't updated it yet. I, I have completely forgotten about it, so I'll take a look at it. Yeah, it's nice. My app for this week is one that I use every day, and I, for some reason, completely forgot to, to mention it all this time. It's, it's called, always those that you use every day that you just I know. Uh, it's called Colloquy, C-O-L-L-O-Q-U-Y. I use it for my IRC client. So uh, I'm I'm very picky about IRC clients. They have to be they have to make announcements properly, and they can't be too intrusive, and and they have to be intuitive. I go as far back with IRC clients for the Mac as uh, if anybody remembers Homer. I don't know if you remember Homer for System Seven years ago. I've never been big into IRC, and I never use System Seven. So yeah. Um, it's it's a good client. You can do auto updates and and auto logins and and you have multiple uh, multiple um, uh, you have a column for your channels. You can have multiple channels. And I'll tell you who's in them, and it's just uh, a great application and it's free. 
It Even better. Can't get better than that, can you? This is on the uh, App Store, right? You know, I originally got this app before there was an App Store, so I don't know. I want to say because I got it just recently and with within the last year. I want to say I downloaded it off the App Store, the Mac App Store. So I believe okay. it's up there. So I haven't updated. I'm one of those people that don't update unless I have to. <laughs> people make fun of me until Obviously. something on them on them breaks and they go oh i see why now you don't update all the time so yeah i, I haven't updated this app in, in a while but uh it's good still works uh, i'm running it on 10.8 and it's it's great all right we're done and <laughs> casey's got that itchy trigger finger <laughs> she wants to get back into guild wars too i do too <laughs> is my naga mouse waiting which waiting naga mouse is that um, this is the the latest Naga Epic mouse mm -hmm. where um, it has the uh, detachable cord so it can also be wireless, but I like to play with it wired. Um, and then it's also got two additional buttons right below the scroll wheel. Nice. So, can you use so it like that? You use it um, uh, on Windows, right? Yeah. Um, it'll run on both Mac and Windows. So if you're playing like WoW on the Mac side, mm -hmm. um, it'll run. I, I like this. I tried the WoW mouse. I've tried a lot of gaming mice. Um, and you kind of have to train yourself to use the Naga mouse because it's got, uh, what is it, 12? These 12 buttons on. On the side, yeah. On the side there, um, which kind of take over your number keys on the keyboard so that you're not moving your left hand around for spell casting or talents mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, you're just mousing around with that. Um, I want to mention something because you mentioned WoW. Since we're doing a Mac show, this, this would be a good time to talk about it real quick. Uh, there has been a problem with the 504 patch for World of Warcraft. Apparently, there's a thread, uh, a thread in the application, in the game, that runs so fast that it's been overheating people's computers. With just Macs or uh, both just on Macs? the Mac, not on the Windows, oh. but but there's a 44 page uh, uh, thread on wow. the World of Warcraft support Mac support forum saying that there are people that are are uh, uh, their their machines are overheating uh, to the point more where more than normal, I more guess? than much more than normal. Yeah. Uh, and so there's actually a, a, a post with directions on how to download Xcode and you can kill the process. I don't know what kind of of damage killing that process is going to do the app itself because it seems like a thread is important i mean as a developer i know that a thread is important yeah why are they telling people to download xcode and oh jesus that well, just seems like i'm thinking because maybe the app maybe the game will run without that in the background okay but like well. really and like let's sit down and do a workshop on you know the, how apps are built and what code is and how to look for this and troubleshoot and and bring everybody up to speed because i i'm assuming most people who play wow don't you know aren't developers and they're right. not going to know these things so why are you forcing the user to be a developer when they just want to play your goddamn game yeah yeah i agree i'm sure they'll fix it fast i mean blizzard is really good at that yeah right this this sounds you know that solution hopefully is temporary it's very uncharacteristic yeah of them to tell people that <laughs> all right we're out of here tell everybody how they can get a hold of us well i am uh at casey queso k-a-c-e-y-k-a-s-o on the twitters mike is at star mike if you can't spell that then you shouldn't be on twitter <laughs> uh we are the infinite loop show at gmail.com we're on google plus we're on facebook we are on um what else we're on uh, itunes Leave us We're everywhere. You. you can find us <laughs> everywhere. And pretty soon I'm going to be rolling um, the Infinite Loop Show. We, we, we say that we're on infinite loop, the infinite loop show com, but I think I'm going to be rolling everything into the because But we will definitely be letting people know. Yeah, we'll let everybody know. All right. Until next time, next week when we'll talk next about the week, big announcement. Big announcement. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.